I believe anyone, yes, anyone can get Grand Champ 2 in ranked 2v2. The problem is, and the reason 99% of you are not there is because you're playing the game mode completely wrong. And it's not necessarily your fault. It's just that most of you watching don't know what the high ranks know about how 2v2 is meant to be played. So if you want to become unstoppable in your rank twos games, today I'm sharing the strategy I used to get Grand Champ 3 in rank 2v2. Wait for it. Yes, wait for it. Solo queuing. Jokes aside, there are seven things I'm going to teach you today and that you need to understand in order to make this work. But I promise if you can follow this, you will become unstoppable in twos. And the best part is you don't need to spend 4,000 hours like I did. And you also don't need Zen level mechanics. Without any further ado, this is my seven step easy GC3 without being mechy 2v2 class. Now you might be wondering, Luke, who are you and why are you so confident that this stuff actually works? And the reason is because I've been coaching for the last four plus years and I see this stuff all day every day because I run Rocket League's largest coaching company, the GrandChampBootCamp.com. I've actually reached GC before. That's just with no mechanics to your point, like just usually being smart, play to the corners, you know, like give space, like you can get pretty far with that. For access to all of my courses completely for free, just join the Discord. We've got over 40,000 members in there. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. Now let's get into the video. The key to winning the most possible 2v2 games is maximizing your impact. Most players don't win in 2v2 because they view the game mode completely the wrong way. And if you enter your rank twos games thinking every time you get the ball, you need to score, you're gonna make bad decisions. The reason is high ranked players know that not every time you get the ball is a scoring opportunity. You need to understand roles. Let me talk to you for a second. Class is in session. Everybody pencils out. Diamond champ players, you need to write this down. Sorry, bleep that out. First role in rank 2v2, get this, it's called first man. The first man's job is to apply pressure. You're going to want to move the play forward while not committing. Second man in 2v2 is the supporting role. Second man's job is cover the worst possible option. Okay, now that you understand these roles, let's get into in-game examples and let me show you the things that you need to do differently that I'm telling you 90% of rank twos players just get completely wrong. The mistake many low rank players make is trying to make every attack a winner. The issue is, as you get to the high ranks in rank 2v2, you have to think of defenses as almost always being double layered. What does this mean? Well, at the low ranks, you get a lot of very fortunate 1v1 situations. Low rank players don't recover and overcommit and are off grabbing boost when the play's going on. And so you get a lot of 1v1s. But at the high ranks, 90% of the time you get the ball, it's going to be when there are two opponents back. What this means is as you get to the higher ranks, you have to accept that not every attack or not every shot is going to be scorable. Instead, you want to think this. My goal when I get the ball is to get it around the first defender while still maintaining possession. So many players get into the trap of just flicking the ball every time they get it or shooting the ball immediately when they get it. And the problem here is while yes, flicking the ball or shooting it might get over one defender, when defenses are double layered, once you get to champ three, GC one, you're very rarely going to be able to score if all you can do is flick the ball away and throw possession. Instead, when you get the ball in rank twos, if there are two players back and you see a double layer of defense, we want to take the ball to open space. We want to move it to positions where we can outplay the first man, where we bait the opposing defense into challenging. That way we create a 2v1. If you don't have a shooting angle on net, take the ball to open space, stall time, control the ball, set up wall plays, even set up dribble plays or cuts anything but giving possession or just booming the ball and flicking away is going to work wonders as first man offense. But what about the situations where you have no space? Let's say you get the ball and there's two opponents back and they're already challenging you. Let's talk about first man offense with no space. The mistake a lot of low rank players make when they're getting early challenge is trying to speed up or force the play. Instead, what I recommend you do is you play slow. Even as first man, 
it's okay to intentionally lose the 50-50. What you can actually do is get the opposing first man to challenge, lose the ball to your teammate, and then all of a sudden, your teammate should now get the ball in a 1v1 while the opponent's still recovering and you're supporting your teammate. Effectively, by slowing the play down and letting them challenge you early, you create a 2v1. But for now, let's move into the third thing and the last thing you need to understand as first man on offense, dead plays. Sometimes you might get a heavy touch or you might lose control and you'll accidentally take the ball into the opposing corner and you don't really have a shot possible. In these situations, it can be very tempting to try to take the ball out or make a center or go for some sort of miraculous shot. But sometimes when you're in your opponent's corner and you see that the defense is back, it's better to leave the ball and try to make impact off the ball than try to force a play that's already dead. Instead, we want to fake like we're going for the ball and then leave it and do something called a run through. A run through is when you ignore the ball and rotate across the field off the ball to the opposite side while looking for demos along the way. The reason run-throughs are so much better than trying to force a dead play in the corner is because not only do you potentially eliminate the last man back and sort of create a 1v1 or create a 2v2 opportunity for your teammate, but at the same time, you're also rotating back. It's sort of a win-win situation if you don't think a goal is likely. Understanding these three concepts on offense alone is critical and will catapult you through champ and even grand champ one without you having to play the ball. But when you do get the ball, it's still important that you can be mechanical. Last year, I was hard stuck GC1 for over 12 months. And the reason was because I knew what I needed to do or I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't have the mechanics or the consistency to do it. That's when I started working with the retired pro coach Shock. He's got over 2000 MMR in twos. He's SSL. And so I knew he'd be able to help a wash player like me figure out the new mechanics of rank twos. After just a few weeks of some new training packs and consistent practice, 20 to 30 minutes a day, two to three times a week, I hit a new peak rank of Grand Champ 3 that put me in the top 20,000 players. If you can relate to me, you also might be a good fit for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Shock or any of our other SSL ranked coaches at my coaching company, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. Inside the GCB Unlimited, we do paid one-on-one -on -one coaching for 18 plus players ranked diamond and above. I'm also personally in the Discord five days a week through the entire month of September. Currently, my coach Shock is still accepting new students, but I paired four Four different champ players with him last week. So he's only got eight spots left open as of the time I'm making this. To get started with coaching, DM my team Discord account with the keyword GC to see if you qualify. 18 plus only. This leads me into my last and final point for first man offense, and that's rotate off the ball. By turning and rotating back through the play instead of rotating off the ball and running through, you might accidentally collide with the ball, you might accidentally take it the wrong way, and you're going to interfere with your teammate. 90% of the time, if a play is dead, we want to rotate off the ball and get back to second. Okay, now let's talk about second man offense. Don't overcommit for the center. I'm telling you, if you're below SSL, the most common way you will get scored on is by overcommitting for a ball in the center. We all know what I'm talking about and we all see it when our teammates do it, but very few of us realize when we do it. If you're waiting for a center from your teammate, if you're the last man back, you have to understand that if the ball gets behind you, consider it a goal. What this means is if the ball is centered, unless you have a clear line on the net and there's no chance that the opponent can recover or put up a hand or anything to stop you, don't go. Attacking the ball right in front of your opponent's net when they're already set up to block it and your teammate is overextended, it's a sure way to get scored on in breakaways. Instead, buy time for your team, let the ball come back to the middle, maybe you take it to the half boost, maybe you just sit on it and wait to take a 50, whatever you do, don't commit. Do this and you will save yourself two or three goals every single game, I promise you. Which leads into my fifth point, force the ball without committing. When you're first man on defense and you have a teammate behind you, get the ball off your opponent while not over committing. What you want to do is win the ball for your teammate behind you. We want to just drive and leave, or sometimes drive and hit the ball and rotate, or drive and demo the opponent and then rotate. If you can just stop front flipping as the first man on defense and losing 50s and then leaving your teammate back in 2v1s, oh my god, you will, it's, it's, it's hard to be below champ. Unfortunately, if you are below GC watching, there will be a lot of times where you're left as the only man back. Maybe your teammate wasn't listening to idea number five and they just full sent into your opponent's corner. Now you're by yourself. What do you do? You need to understand the concept of buying time. In these situations, we want to rely heavily on fake challenges 
and shadow defense. A very good strategy when you're trying to buy time can be putting the ball in your corner. Because when you put it in your corner, there are very narrow angles to score, and the opponents are going to have to find a way to get it out in order to score again. In most cases, this will give your teammate enough time to get back. So it can be a very good strategy if you can to position your car between the ball and the net to sort of force your opponent into the corner. Or if you actually can challenge and win possession of the ball, you can then take it back to your own corner. Sometimes taking it back, if it means your goal is time, can be better than going right back for the counterattack or trying to stop it at half field. Finally, I've saved the best for last, the most important rule of this entire video that will probably get you to Grand Champ faster than any other rule is don't creep to your front post. When you're on defense and you have a teammate in front of you, your teammate's goal is to get the ball off the opponents. And most of the time, what this means is if you're back post, you will always be ready for the ball. If the opponent gets it around your teammate and they're still in the corner, you have time to drive up and challenge. And if they recenter, you have time to go from the back post in between the shot and the net to split it up and put a hand up. The back post allows you to stop pretty much every attack if you have a teammate forcing the ball on the front post. However, the mistake that every diamond and every champ and even grand champ ones that I coach make is they push up to the front post. But the problem is if it goes off your backboard or if it goes to the center, when you're on the front post, you can't stop it. Remember, we position opposite the side of the ball and instead of creeping up and following our teammate, we wait back. And with that, I promise, even if you have no max, sitting back post will make it pretty much impossible for people to score on you below champ. If you can remember to stick back post and follow the other six things I mentioned earlier, you will pretty much be unstoppable in grand champ two or below without ever having to whip out your max. Speaking of mechanics, these tips should alone get you to grand champ. But once you start to get to the higher ranks, chances are most people are gonna know this stuff. In these cases, it's really important that you have the mechanics to score when you do get those few scoring chances. Good news is I just dropped a video that goes perfectly with this. It's called the simplest way to get mechanical in 2024. Pair it with this video and you'll be golden for ranked. As always, let me know if this was helpful and thank you so much for watching. Peace guys.